Hey toy collectors, welcome to another super exciting, outrageous toy review. Today, we're taking a look at my RetroCon 2019 haul. We're going to start by showing off these buttons that I got from the show, the official 2019 RetroCon button, as well as the You've Got Turtle Power pin in honor of voice actor Robbie Wrist being there. They were giving these out to anybody that cosplayed as a Ninja Turtles character. And uh, we were handing them out to people that just had awesome Ninja Turtle shirts on as well. So literally the first things I bought at RetroCon were these two Monsters in My Pocket figures. If you don't know about Monsters in My Pockets, I have a whole series of videos I did with my buddy Derek about these. I love this toy line. I pretty much have them all. But there are some weird, rare color variants and things like that. And uh, so I happened to get this red behemoth. He's a 25-pointer, making him one of the rares from Series 1. I couldn't remember if I had him in red or not and decided to grab him. But the real kind of gem that I grabbed was this pink Kraken. Uh, the Kraken, I don't know how many points it is worth, but it's not worth as many. Uh, it's a 20-pointer. 20 20-pointer. 20 so it's not the top tier. But this hot pink color is one of the more rare colors. So I was definitely glad, 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 glad to grab them. The second items I bought at RetroCon are two of these weapon racks with some of the weapons still attached that came with the original Ninja Turtles. Obviously, this one's missing a Ninja Star. This one's missing the pizza slice knife, whatever that thing's called. And then the actual main turtle weapons would have been attached to the outside. But I thought these were neat. I have a weapons rack or two laying around, but I didn't have any with the weapons still on them. And uh, I always think these are neat because as a kid... I took the weapons, or I actually got my dad to clip the weapons off, and he gave me these back and tried to tell me that it was a a thing you could use, and I didn't understand, and I was just like, no, it's not, and I just threw them out. But much later on in life, I realized these pegs are actually used to display your Ninja Turtle accessories, and, I, you know, just kind of a cool thing. I bought a lot of three Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Z putties. I love these figures. I, I think they're just fun to army build. They're a pain to army build because they pop apart with this feature. And I was shocked that all three of them actually had their accessories as well as their body parts. So I, I couldn't pass them up. I bought three Fun School figures. These are actually Russian Fun School. I had a lot of Indian Fun School figures years ago. They got really easy to, uh, to, to you know, they were really easy to come across. I just love that these weird, they're they are officially licensed, um, but produced by Fun School instead of Hasbro. And they sometimes have wacky colors. And uh, as you can see here, you know, the file card is in Russian. There's the cross cell with lots of different characters. I always think it's interesting on the Fun School, you get such a weird mix of characters. You have, you know, early 80s classics, classic Joes here, as well as like Star Brigade and Battle Corps and, and things like that, all on one card back. But I picked up Ripper, uh, mostly just because I thought his, his colors were just a little bit funky. Um, you know, he's a little bit brighter than usual. His accessories are kind of pale looking, but I do like that it has that classic card art. I got Chuckles! Chuckles is one of my favorite G.I. Joes. He's got a real cult following nowadays, but my friends and I just, I don't know, we just really liked him for some dumb reason and used him a lot in some video projects we did many years ago. And so I have a soft spot for him. So this Chuckles has like a different paint scheme a little bit. His shirt's much darker. The flesh tone on his chest is barely painted in. Uh, he does have his pistol floating around in there and his holster. And, uh, you know, Chuckles in, in Russian. I, I, I don't even know how you say it. The last figure I picked up from these Fun School figures is Spearhead and Max. I actually have Spearhead, Loose, and Max. Uh, I, I picked them up separately at some sort of toy show, but I don't think I have all the accessories to them. So now I have the backpack, the bright orange bobcat, spearhead in almost his Night Force colors, his gun, and his helmet. Is his machete in there? Oh, the machete's in the top bubble. So he does come with all his accessories. Uh, spearhead Max was one of my favorite figures as a kid. I love the characters with pets. Even though he was bright orange, I just really, really liked him. And so to grab him in these wacky colors on the Russian Fun School card just seemed like an opportunity I couldn't pass up. I bought this repeater yo-yo from 
One Man's Junk. If you haven't seen One Man's Junk on YouTube, you got to check him out. He's another one of my like flea market buddies, local guy that I see a lot um, at the flea market. And this thing features repeater there. I actually borrowed this yo-yo from a friend from a friend's collection for a special guest spot that I'm doing on a, somebody else's channel. Um, and so I figured I should probably own one now, and since I saw it at RetroCon, I decided to grab it. These are not officially RetroCon haul items, but my buddy Chris from Long's Toys had these. He was posting them on a, on a Facebook group to get rid of them, and I said, I'll buy them off of them. And we hadn't met up in a while. He picked these up on clearance at Ross, and he brought them to the show, and he said, I ah, don't, you know, you don't know me anything for them. So if you haven't checked out Long's Toys, you got to check out his channel. But he gave me two of the Loyal Subjects figures from the Thundercats line. Here I've got lion -O with Snarf. Snarf, Snarf! Comes with the Claw Shield and the Sword of Omens. And this one contains a very pale-looking panthro. You better not step on my splashed flange. Let's see, does he have a nunchuck in here? I hope so. Yep, there's his nunchucks. For the first RetroCon many years ago, eight years ago, I guess, I did not have my YouTube channel yet then, or, or this version of my YouTube channel. I had a different one at the time that I was not very active on. And I was actually focusing on blogging. My Action Figure Adventures blog was, was in its heyday. And that year I set a bunch of goals for things I was trying to find at RetroCon. And one of the things I included on that list was some sort of Bionic 6 figure. I think I bought Mechanic that year. But I found this Dr. Scarab that was in pretty nice shape. And I bought him because my Dr. Scarab is in terrible shape with one of my collection. And these Bionic 6 guys are tough to collect because they are made of die-cast metal as well as plastic parts. Uh, the plastic parts tend to break, and the die-cast metal tends to get its paint rubbed off. So I was happy to pick up this guy. He's a hefty one. My buddy Nick gave me a set of six birthday candles. Uh, these are on card, but they're not in great shape. He actually just picked up a better set for himself. I think that's why he passed this set on to me, because the, the blister's actually, like, taped on right here. But these are six birthday candles made by Unique in 1986. It includes Falcon... Sergeant Slaughter, Outback, General Hawk, Cobra Commander, and Gung Ho. I had these candles on a cake when I was a kid. I still have said candles with half-melted heads, and the pictures on yojo.com actually are of my half-melted candles. So while these ones aren't perfect, uh, I am very excited to have these in my collection, and uh, I wonder if Nick paid a dollar for these at a yard sale or something. Not sure, but uh, I would definitely... Uh, I'm definitely going to be proud to display these and wouldn't mind getting an even m uh, more amazing set of these, like a really minty set sometime. Because uh, like I said, these guys, a little bit beat, but not too bad. My buddy Nick was also cool enough to hook me up with this payload file card from the Crusader. This is a file card I needed. He actually had several rare file cards that he was selling at RetroCon, including some of the Night Force cards. And uh, he was totally cool enough to give me this one for my collection, which is awesome. I also stole this from Nick. He had this full Action Force Lady J card back. I said I was taking it. <laughs> um, it's pretty cool. I, I mean, I, he, there's no good way of displaying these. I, you know, I just kind of keep them in a box. But I just think it's neat to have that Action Force logo on there. I'll have to check the file card real carefully and see if, if it... Uh, it matches up. Oh, yeah, see, look at this. They changed her birthplace. She was born in Cork, Ireland. Trinity College in Dublin. I think that was in the original one. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of interesting. While digging through Nick's file card bin, I also found this General Hawk Star Brigade card. This came off the back of the... What do you call that thing? The, the Robobot, the Armor Bot... Armor Bot. <laughs> this came off the back of the Armor Bat... Armor Bot... Bah, bah, armor Bot box. And again, I just told Nick, I'm taking this. And he was cool with that. <laughs> we'll straighten up at some point. I also got this Honeycomb Centerpiece G.I. Joe birthday party supply uh, from Nick. I b bought this off of him. He had it for sale at his table. I guess he's got another one or decided he didn't want it anymore. But it is made in 1986, the same year as those candles. So it is interesting to see these three guys on here 
but Roadblock was not included in that candle set. Kind of interesting. I do have goodie bags and plates and napkins that all match this thing. Um, here you can see the artwork on the back, and it's not unfolded, obviously, but the, the little honeycomb thing flips open to make a stand for this. Robbie Rist, the voice actor for Michelangelo in the 90s movies, was at the show, and I got to meet him and talk to him a little bit, and I got this signed print of Mikey. It says, To Kevin, Numbers Cowabunga! Uh, so I'll put this in a frame and hang it up with the uh, other pictures and prints and things like that that I have from other voice actors and, and media talent. I took this Super 7 5.5 inch style Shira figure with me to get signed. So Melindy Britt, the voice actress that gave Shira her amazing voice through that vintage cartoon show, signed this for me. I also got to show her some pictures of my He-Man and Shira animation cell collection. She was very impressed with... Uh, some of the cells that I had. She said I should have brought one of those to get signed, and I had thought about it, uh, and, and then kind of forgot about it. So this is what I got signed. So I found these two G.I. Joe guns. They, these are the guns that came with Spearhead and Max, molded in black. I saw them in a bin of, like, G.I. Joe parts, but they were with Star Wars figures. And uh, I thought, oh, these could be... Night Force Spearhead's gun, or they could be the ones that go with the Sonic Fighter Lamprey. And I bought them, and I went to my friend Henry, who's a, a G.I. Joe dealer and, and an absolute G.I. Joe accessory expert. And I was like, all right, so how do I know which are the which ones are these? Does this go to the Night Force one, or does this go to the Sonic Fighter one? And he looks at the end here, and he goes, do you see how it's smooth? It's got no lines, no ridges in it. These aren't vintage accessories. These go to the Snow Serpent from the, you know, G.I. Joe vs. Cobra era or Venom vs. Valor era or whatever. And uh, I was very disappointed because I thought I had found some vintage G.I. Joe accessory gold. But I do appreciate the knowledge from Henry. He He's a whiz when it comes to variations and, and accessories and all that stuff. So these were kind of a dud purchase, but I learned something from that. And I'm passing that on to you guys. Speaking of Henry... I bought this shell of the Night Force version of the Triple T. I don't, I don't know what it's called. The Night Scrambler, Night Rambler, Night Striker, Night Boomer, Night Raider, Night something or other. I don't know. It doesn't have any stickers on it. It doesn't have any removable parts. Uh, but it does display well. I may just put Triple T parts on it. The black missiles and the black guns and a white engine cover. Um, I might spray paint the engine cover black if I can find one. Maybe I'll spray paint the missiles neon orange, but I'll probably just leave them black. I just kind of want it for display purposes, sort of a placeholder. He gave me a good deal on it because it, it has no part. Another vendor that had a lot of G.I. Joe stuff, uh, he had actually recently picked up a collection. He was kind of sifting through it. There was actually another person there helping him part together some vehicles. And I sifted through his stuff and grabbed a few things. And I grabbed these two Army Builders. I got a Techno Viper and a Gyro Viper. This is the driver to the Cobra Mamba. Uh, in, in the accessory bins, I picked up the helmet to the Gyro Viper off that same vendor, so that makes that a complete figure. I picked up a Storm Shadow backpack that seems to be in good shape. You know, that's an accessory you can't go wrong with. I got a microphone to a Battle Force 2000 guy. Uh, this is not Dodger. This might be Avalanches. I don't know. Those, those parts are, tend to be hard to find, so I grabbed them. I snagged two of PsychOut's wrist communicator pieces. Again, these are little accessories that people are often looking for. And I got a Python Patrol Stun Hubcap, which uh, I think I'm going to need in the future. There, there, there's, um, there's, a, there's a recent flea market pickup that uh, has not been shown off on the channel and probably won't get shown off for a while. Um, I think it's going to be like a special video this, this winter sometime when there aren't a lot of flea market-y stuff to find. But I'm going to need a, a Python Patrol hubcap to go along with some of that stuff. I bought one beat-up Snaggletooth at this show. I've got a Snaggletooth collection going on. Uh, if I can buy him for under 5 bucks, I do. This guy was $4. He's very worn. You know, his belt's pretty worn. His toes are pretty worn. But I'll love him. He can go on my shelf. I bought a Cobra Hydrofoil at the very end of the show when things were kind of winding down and getting packed up. Uh, Henry told me th th that he got a deal on a tomahawk from a guy, and the guy still had a moray. Um, the moray is missing the lens to the 
spotlight, which is you know the rarest piece to this thing. But it looked pretty clean. I do have a hover uh, or a, a a hydrofoil, but I couldn't remember exactly what condition mine was in. This one again looks pretty nice. It's got you know most of the parts are in nice shape. It came with a baggie of additional accessories here, including two machine guns. Um, it's got some of the depth charges and things like that. It came with the lamprey figure with his file card and his gun. So I decided this was a pretty good, a pretty good item to pick up as a possible upgrade for my collection. Ooh, ooh, this lamprey unfortunately needs a new rubber band stat, and his gun has had the uh, string clipped off of it. So that's a little bit disappointing, but it'll be okay. So like I said, I'm going to compare this one to the one in my collection. I was trying to talk the guy down on the price a little bit. We just kind of couldn't meet in the middle, and then at the end he goes, what if we stick with my price, but I throw in a Dreadnought cycle? I thought, mm, all right, I'll do that. Unfortunately, I didn't really inspect the Dreadnought cycle. It's actually broken, so I'm a little bit disappointed with that. This fork, half of this bar here is missing, so it doesn't fit in there right. Uh, so I'm probably just going to ra raid this thing of parts, because these pieces and the missiles are good, the gun's good. Uh, it came with one exhaust pipe, and I, I have a couple of Dreadnought Cycles already. So like I said, this thing I'm, is probably going to get raided for parts. It did come with the blueprints, and it came with one of these pamphlets. Not that I need the pamphlet for anything anymore. Uh, I got, you know, multiple copies of these. But that was the... That was the deal, and that's that's kind of sometimes how those last-minute deals go. Uh, you know, you're, you're wheeling and dealing, and I don't know, I wasn't thinking super hardcore about it, you know, examining things, and, uh, you know, the, the cycle was not as good of a deal as a throw-in as I thought. I bought a dinosaur. This is an Imperial Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's yellow and green, and this dinosaur often gets confused for the dinosaur that comes with the... Hasbro Dino Hunter set, you can see just how similar these guys are. There's a slight size difference. The main difference is the way the arms are molded. And, of course, the, the Dino Hunters one doesn't have the, the lipstick on it. Um, but I have been wanting to get a couple of these guys to kind of build out a little pack of dinosaurs. One of my buddies, Dave, actually told me he was trying to get a few of these, too. So I'm kind of looking around for them and, and snagging a few of these uh, inexpensive rubber Imperial Dinosaurs so I can you know, add them to my collection and, and give a couple to Dave. I bought a pile of 90s Land of the Lost figures for very inexpensive. I don't know why I love these 90s Land of the Lost figures so much. I didn't have them as a kid, but I really wanted them. I was just, like, a little too old and also knew that, like, I didn't want to get into other toy lines. I was collecting G.I. Joe, even though that was kind of curtailing. I probably was still getting some Ninja Turtles. Uh, does it even say what year? These were Tiger Electronics in 1992. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's kind of winding down on my toy collecting as a kid phase. Uh, but I thought these were cool because I did watch the show. Uh, I would look at them at Ames all the time. And uh, at the very first RetroCon, I bought a whole bunch of these as a, as a um, end of the show kind of deal. And I got some of the play sets and vehicles and things. And everything's boxed. And uh, I've been kind of wanting to open them up, possibly. And so when I saw this big stack, I was like, oh, th they were really cheap. And I can open them and have some loose on display. And one of these I didn't have yet. Um, so when I look at the back here, I still need Tom carded, the regular version of Tom. Because I have, the, like, the talking version. Kevin, Shung, Annie, Tasha. I just picked up Krista, and I needed her carded. Nim and Stink. So this is the Slee Stack Nim. He's kind of like a uh, secondary Slee Stack. There's Kevin Porter. He's the brother. Shung, he's the leader of the Slee Stacks. He has his, like, crystal sword or, or dagger that was important in the show. There's Tasha. She's got a, like, crank-to-walk feature, and she comes with little rocks. You can throw at the dinosaur. I do love these Bradley stickers from... Uh, let's say these were $1.88. That's amazing. Here's Krista, the female warrior that, that befriends the family, the, porter, the, the porters when they get there. Uh, like I said, this is one I didn't have, so this one won't get opened. This one will go my collection of Land of the Lost. My, <laughs> the collection I have that no one admires. Land of the Lost. La la Land of the Lost. And here we have Annie Porter, the little sister. She comes with a bow and arrow and a quiver. Oh, I got two Shungs. I didn't even notice that. 
I got an extra Shung, the leader of the Slee Stacks. I picked up two Visionaries at RetroCon. I might have overpaid for these guys a little bit. I'm not really sure what they go for. I tend to find Visionaries really inexpensively at the flea market once in a while for just a couple bucks. Um, I kind of splurged on these guys because I do not have the blue and white guy and I haven't really seen him around much. And this orange guy has his helmet. So I thought that was kind of cool. But their holograms aren't perfect. If you look at the eagle or owl or dove or whatever it is, it's definitely scratched up down here. There's like a black spot that doesn't fill in and the same thing goes here with this uh, I think it's an ape but there's that section that's scratched off and all black and that's kind of a shame but I'm excited to have a few more visionaries in my collection all right so this isn't a toy this isn't the kind of thing I usually buy at a toy show but the group spiral rewind spiralrewind.com they take the old VHS covers and they spiral bind them into notebooks. And I just thought it was a really cool idea. Uh, Chris from Long's Toys actually showed me he picked up a Buffy one for his wife. And uh, I went over and checked out that table. And they had this Burger King Kids Club Ninja Turtles tape one. I grabbed this. And I also bought the Jean-Claude Van Damme Street Fighter movie. And gave it to my buddy Kieran as a thank you for making that Ninja Force video. And some other videos that will come out in the future with me on this channel. The last toy I bought at RetroCon is um, from a line that I'm not really familiar with, but I own another one of these figures in different colors, and I love it because it is basically a G.I. Joe bootleg. So it's, this guy's got like a weird, uh, it's got like a bearded head, but he's got like a headband with a, a light on it or something like that. He's got a, a pretty generic torso. I do love the chocolate chip camo on him, but when you look at his arms... These are totally Destro's arms. Look at the wrist rockets there and the, like, the mechanical fingers to it. And then as you move down, even though this doesn't have the standard G.I. Joe hips, it's got more of a T-crotch here, these are bat legs. The Battle Android Trooper, there's the top of the boot and the little uh, doohickey on his leg, and this side has the pistol. Um, I don't know whether it was like officially the, the, the parts were allowed to be used or if it's total bootleg. I don't even know what line this guy is from. But like I said, I just think they're really cool, and I saw this at the very end of the show. I literally bought this last thing as a vendor was packing up. But I think he's pretty cool. Special thanks once again to my friends, Rose and Tony, who put on RetroCon. You guys did a great job. It was another amazing experience. Special thanks to all my viewers that stopped by and said hi to me. Special thanks to all my fellow YouTube creators that were there at the show, hanging out, vending, and doing whatever. It was a great time. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos.